Hello everyone and welcome to another Directions Mag Geo special webinar today sponsored by our friends over at Esri. I'm Barbara Duke, Managing Editor here at Directions Mag, joined by our webinar producer Lynette Qualia. We encourage you to get the latest news, articles, podcasts, and of course more webinars over at DirectionsMag.com. We are excited to have Jackie and Ishmael with us today to talk about Survey123. They have got some excellent examples of how to improve your workflow and make things more efficient in your organization. Welcome. Glad to have you with us today. Thank you very much for the introduction. I think, Jackie, we are going to go straight for it, right? Should we? Go oh, right on in. Sounds great. Okay. So I'm, I'm really excited about this session that we have today. Uh, we are going to talk about no code workflow automation using survey one two three the agenda for the session is pretty simple roughly 60 minutes i'm going to make sure there is plenty of time for a live q a at the end i will start with a few slides covering some basic concepts first common scenarios for workflow automation what is workflow automation all of that and then the main section of this presentation is going to be live demos so I'm going to go step by step to show you how you can automate workflows with uh, Survey123. If everything goes well, I'm sure that by the end of this presentation, you will get some great new tips to improve the way you work with Survey in your organization. And as I said, at the end, live Q&A. You, you don't have to wait until the end though. You can start typing in your questions and Jackie is going to classify them and put them all in a queue so we can take them on at the end. And if we don't get to it, don't worry because we will be posting a general Q&A written document that you will be able to access online. Okay, so since you are, most of you are familiar with Survey123, but for those of you that are not familiar, uh, Survey123 helps organizations transform everyday workflows using location-aware smart forms. So in a way, well, Survey is really about creating these smart forms. They can run in mobile devices. They can run from a web browser. So of course, building these surveys is great, but the way I see it is this is the beginning, the beginning of something. You don't collect data just for the fun of it. You collect data because people need it. So using Survey123, you can easily gather information and then create real-time beautiful information products like dashboards to support decision making. You can also share information from your forms using the Survey123 report services. You can create high quality PDF documents with your own maps, your tables, your photos and signatures. You can even brand these PDF documents with your own logo and color schemes. These are, again, great ways within ArcGIS to share the information that you collect with Survey123. But today, we're going to talk about workflow automation. Workflow automation is different. It's yet another way for you to share your Survey123 data with people. Workflow automation helps you integrate Survey123 with hundreds of applications and services. Why is this important? Well, because when you work with other people, you are going to find that other people use other technologies, not just Survey123. Think about applications that people use on an everyday basis. Office 365, Salesforce, Google Apps, uh, Box, social media. What if we could take data from Survey123 and instantly, completely out of the box, without coding, we could push that data into these applications? that so people in your org can get the data that they need the way they want it and also when they need it more quickly. That's really what workflow automation is all about. And that's why workflow automation can make such a big difference in your organization because it's going to help you really leverage, spread, share your Survey123 data to support people during the work that they do. Now, there are different ways in which people use workflow automation with Survey. The most popular, I would say, is instant notifications. 
in this um, scheme or in this pattern, when someone submits a survey, workflow automation will be able to look at the data in the form and then send a notification to someone that needs that info. You could send an SMS, you could send an email, but you could also add a new message into a Teams channel, for example. Uh, there are actually many different possibilities. Take the example for 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 the, the example of a hydrant inspection, for example. You do a hydrant inspection with the Survey123 mobile app. Depending on the results of this inspection, you may decide to do nothing or send an SMS to a field coordinator or a, a responsible person for the area where that fire, fire hydrant has been has been uh, inspected. So again, this is just one way for people to use workflow automation. The second pattern is automatic data transfer. In this case, it's not about making this information available in a timely manner, like it was with instant notifications. In this case, it's really about bringing more to people. So if you have someone who is familiar with Excel and they love working with Excel, don't export the data. Do automatic data transfer. Create an Excel spreadsheet that has live data coming in from Survey123, like you can see in this example. I could be typing in information from my web browser in my form, and then as I submit the data, that data goes as a new row into the Excel spreadsheet. The third pattern for workflow automation with survey is data enrichment. In this case, the idea is what if we could take information from the form and as it is submitted, process this information to enrich the data. So in this particular example, we have a person who is submitting a water violation report. Maybe this person here in orange, you can see it, types in the type of violation, sets the location of that violations, etc. What if we could use that information to generate extra attributes to enrich the data? For example, we can take the GPS location, the latitude and longitude, and automatically calculate what is the closest address, in what city the violation happened, in what zip code. We could even gather the current weather at the location where the water violation report was submitted. Now, the way I see it is that these three options, instant notifications, automatic data transfer, and data enrichment, they are not mutually exclusive. In fact, in many cases, people combine them. They do them all at once. In fact, we are going to do a hands-on exercise. So be ready to open a web browser because I'm going to ask you to complete a web form. This web form has workflow automation configured and it does instant data transfer, enrichment, and also an instant notification. So let's pretend that we want to report an issue uh, in our city. So we are going to go into this web form and we are going to um, place in the map the location where an issue has happened. We are going to classify the issue. Think of my neighbor is making too much noise or a car has been abandoned in the street, something like that. Now, what is very important here for the exercise to work well is that you use the comments question in this form to describe the issue in your own words. Like literally say, you know, what is going on? So my neighbor is making a lot of noise or something like that. In fact, if you are a Spanish speaker person, please complete the form in Spanish because this is a multilingual form and it is available in English and Spanish. So type in the comments in Spanish if you can, because through data enrichment, we will translate all these Spanish comments into English automatically through workflow automation. So I hope you are ready because we are going to share the link with you in the chat window. So get the link and complete the form. Once you are done completing the form, once you have submitted, please in the chat say, I'm done, you know, I completed the form. So I'll give you about 30 seconds or so to do this. Go ahead, please, and submit the form.
Ishmael, it looks like our Gold Star A plus students are starting to complete the form here. Okay, that's awesome. Yep. Hopefully you can see my screen now again. You should mm -hmm. see a map with uh, dots. Awesome. And as I refresh the map, let's explore. We have some data from Argentina, South Africa. This is awesome. Let me refresh once more. So data is definitely uh, coming in. Okay, so, well, this is proving the point. You know, you can use a survey one, two, three, form and see the information right away as it comes in. And in fact, many people share information this way. You know, you create an information product like this, like a map on a table and people look at the information coming in. That's great. Now, let me flip here to this uh, Google Sheet. And you can see here that uh, the information is coming live, okay? This is the same data you were looking at in, in the map, but in this case is in a Google a spreadsheet, okay? So let's have a quick look at some of this information here. So first of all, of course, we have the name of the person, we have the email, we have the date when the data was submitted, the code violation, the closest address, we have a link to the map, the city, the comments. Now, look carefully at this column right here for the uh, language, the color, the column, you see the language. Some, most of them are in English. EN is the code for English. Some of them are in Spanish. This is in uh, Portuguese, actually. That's a good one, even in French. So, uh, as you can see, the text is automatically translated to English. So, let's have a look at these comments in, in Spanish here, right? Hay una casa abandonada al frente de, uh, and then there is an abandoned house in front of. So it's automatically translated. How is that possible? Where does the magic happen? Well, it's really no magic. It's really workflow automation. Um, the, the other thing, this basically proves two things. This is instant data transfer. We are bringing the data into Excel. It's also data enrichment because we take data from your form and we process the data to create even better data, in this case, translating all the input into, into English, okay? So this demonstrates a couple of uh, things. Uh, the other one is instant notifications. So if you typed in a correct email address, you should have received an email. So if you check your email, you will have something like this, right? Thanks for submitting a code violation report. Here are some details about the information you included in your form. So you can see that the workflow automation process took data from the form, in this case, your email, and sent an email to you, kind of like acknowledgement that you have submitted this code violation report. And there is a link to the map and some additional information in there, right? So hopefully, you get kind of the essence of this idea of workflow automation and the different options you have to do things. Instant notifications, you can do enrichment, you can do instant data transfer. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how you can make this happen. How can you automate survey one, two, three? Uh, I want to be upfront with this, first of all, the workflow automation tasks do not happen within ArcGIS. In other words, in ArcGIS, we have no workflow automation tools, at least no code workflow automation tools to do these type of things. Uh, you need to use third-party workflow automation software. And there are multiple applications out there that are wonderful to do this type of work. This workflow automation software simplifies the process of working with different applications and services. They have many connectors that connect applications of all sorts. And then visually, you can connect applications and data and do lots of different things. The, um, the tools that um, have out of the box survey one, two, three connectors are Integromat and Power Automate. If you go to these tools, if you use them, you will, you will find an out of the box survey one, two, three connector that you can use right away. So let me talk briefly about the two of them. Integromat 
is an awesome, has an awesome and beautiful out of authoring experience. It's all visual, you can see the diagram here and you can connect all the pieces together very easily. It has more than a thousand integrations and it has ready to use Survey123 templates. So for the most common things like I want to send an email or I want to add a note into a Teams channel, you actually have templates. You can select the template and simply say, what is the survey I want to listen for? What is the message I want to send? And what's the channel? It's like super easy. You can create a free subscription to Integramat and use it. It has some limitations, but uh, you can use it for free. And then you can upgrade to the paid subscriptions if you want to do uh, many invocations or you want to do special things. Integramat is compatible with ArcGIS Online and Enterprise. So if you have ArcGIS Enterprise, you can automate it as well. And there are a couple of interesting things that you can do with the Survey123 connector. You can listen to new or updated records in, in Survey. You can also create Survey123 reports. Uh, very quickly, just so you can see what this feels like, here is the Integromat workflow that run under the covers when you com completed the code violation report. As you can see, I have a survey one, two, three module here. This is basically listening to my to the survey that you completed. When this process executes, we basically get information from the form. You can see all the information here that someone submitted. And then this information is used in other modules. I have a Google Translate module that takes the comments in whatever language they are and sends them to Google Translate. We get back the response in English and then we use that information along with data from the form to populate a Google Sheet spreadsheet. And finally, if certain conditions are met, here is a filter, we use the Microsoft 365 email connector to basically send the email. Okay, so again, you know, there are gazillion connectors that you can use, add them us and create your workflows to automate, to automate tasks. Now, the second tool that has a Survey123 connector is Microsoft Power Automate. Power Automate is included with Office 365. So if you already have 365, you can already use this. It also has hundreds of different integrations. It has templates. It's also compatible with ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise. And in this case, for Power Automate, we only have one action, which is listen to a new uh, record or an updated record from Survey123. The option to invoke the Survey123 reports at this moment is missing within the Power Automate um, tool. And with that, we're just wondering a bit more about what workflow automation tools you plan to use. Are you, just so you can select all that apply, by the way, um, do you use or plan to use? Is it Integromat, Microsoft Power Automate, something else? And if it's something else, can you put it in the chat so we know what you're thinking about there? And if you're not sure yet, just click, I don't know yet. All right. Give folks just a few more seconds. Oh, good. And some folks dropping some things into the chat here. Wonderful. Thank you. We're getting some great questions for later. Thank you so much for that. Okay, looks like over 50% said Microsoft Power Automate. It's not a huge surprise, I wouldn't think, but Integromat is 29%. The people that don't know yet, there's actually 38% Ishmael that aren't sure yet. Which one's okay? Okay, well, since most people want to use Power Automate, I suggest we jump into the next section and we do a demo with Power Automate. How about that? So I'm going to um, play a little bit with uh, Power Automate so you can see the entire process. Hopefully, I'm thinking in no less than 15 minutes, we will have this done. I want to basically, I want to recreate the exercise that you did a few minutes ago. I'm going to use Survey123 to create a form and then I'm going to do the uh, instant data transfer demo and maybe 
so if we have time, some data enrichment too. Okay, so to get us started, I go into the Survey123 website. You can see it here. And then we can launch Survey123. Now, when you launch it, you need to log in with your ArcGIS credentials. You can see here my, my gallery of surveys. I don't have any so far. So what I can do is I, can, I come here and I create a new survey. Now, you can create a new survey from scratch by dragging and dropping questions into the designer. You can also use the Survey123 Connect desktop tool. But today, I'm going to use a template. So we have a gallery of ready to use templates that you can use. As you can see here, there are multiple categories by industry. Today, I'm going to use the code violation form. And this will be familiar to you because it's basically the form that you completed just a few minutes ago. OK, so you can have a quick preview of the template right here. And if you like this, you can hit use this template and this will basically bring in the template so you can modify it. Now, at this moment, you can change the form, you can change the labels, you can add new questions. Um, I'm going to basically change the title here. So I'm going to type in here, um, let's see, well, I'm going to code violation directions mag demo. And I'm going to put that in here as well. And then I'm going to publish it, okay? So I'm going to save my design and then I'm going to hit publish. So this will take a few seconds. It will publish the survey. Now, next, I'm going to do the workflow automation bit. So as I said, I'm going to use Microsoft Office since it's so popular. And here, I'm in Office 365, okay? I have an account, an Office 365 account. So here, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go into Excel. Why? Because I want to create a destination for the Survey123 data. So let me open this Excel file. And there is really no secret about it. I have an empty spreadsheet. And you can see that I added here uh, some headers, some columns. So what is important here is that you add the headers the columns, and then you go into format as table. This is very important. If you don't do this, ain't gonna work, right? You have to create, define, register a table within the spreadsheet. And you do it just like that. You format as a table, and now Excel knows that this is a table, okay? And, well, that's pretty much it. You need to add as many columns as information you want to extract from Survey 1. One, two, three, into this spreadsheet. Step number one. Next, I'm going to go back into Office 365. And in this case, I'm going to go and look at Power Automate, okay? If you have Office 365, you have this. You may need to go into all apps maybe, and then look for a Power Automate, but it's, it's there. So you select Power Automate. Power Automate is an environment, it's part of Office 365, it is specifically designed to help you automate tasks and integrate with many different applications. In fact, if you come here, you can look at all the different connectors included with Power Automate. And this is the amazing thing. Like you can find here everything. There is a connector for Oracle, for SQL Server, for Google Drive, for FTP sites, for Box, for uh, Salesforce, of course, Survey123, and many, many, many others. You have connections to payment systems, uh, to SMS uh, service providers. It's, I mean, look at the list. It's just amazing. And this is what I love about Power Automate and, and tools like Integromat. They really make a living out of creating so many connectors. So. There is constant activity here. Uh, new connectors get added every month. If you look for Survey123 here, um, you will actually find the Survey123 um, connector. In fact, there are even templates that you can use uh, to get started right away. So let me uh, look here, Survey123, and you will see some of these templates that are available. You see, send an email. When a survey response is submitted, send it via Outlook. 
Uh, this will do a push notification. This will load data into Excel. Uh, this will add information into a SharePoint list. You can use these templates to get started. But we are going to make things the hard way today. I'm going to go into Create, and I'm going to create a workflow from scratch. So I'm going to create an automated cloud flow here. First of all, I'm going to select my connector, which is going to be Survey123. In other words, who is going to trigger the flow? Well, when a survey response is submitted, I want to trigger my flow. And what's going to be the name? So I'm going to say here, Directions Demo. Morning. And now I go and create it. This adds the connector into the flow. Now I need to sign in, and this makes sense. You cannot automate surveys that you don't own. You have to be the owner of the survey before you can do automation on top of it. So you're going to click on sign in, and then you are going to sign in with the credentials of the user that authored that survey that you want to automate. So at this moment, you can choose from the surveys that you own, the one that you want to listen to, Code Violations Directions Magazine. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So next, you are going to add a new step. So you click on New Step, and again, you are presented with all the different connectors and modules available. So someone in the chat was asking, can you demo how to add data into SQL Server? Here is the SQL Server uh, connector. So here you can look for the action and you can, for example, insert a row. So obviously for this to work, you need to configure SQL Server to accept requests from Office 365. And your IT department can help you do that. And then you use this module and all the data goes straight into SQL Server. Um, in my case, I actually don't want to load data in there. I don't have a SQL Server database prepared. I want to use the Excel connector. So I'm going to come here to Excel. And I'm going to say, well, I want to add a row into a new uh, table. So let me see, add a row into a table. Okay, so as you can see, this is a module and an action that requires me to select, obviously, the Excel spreadsheet where I want to add the row. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just selecting the location of my Excel spreadsheet, which is report violations. As you can imagine, this is already looking in my Office 365 account. I'm logged in in Office 365, so I don't have to re-log in, right? That's why it comes right away. Now here in this Excel file, there is a table. Remember, we formatted part of the spreadsheet as a table, so it's there. And look how automatically all the columns, all the headers I added into Excel appear. So all I need to do now is to basically tell automate what information goes in these cells. So for example, example for the status, I'm going to say submitted. It's always, it's, it's a fixed string. For the address, I'm going to use dynamic content. What is dynamic content? Well, dynamic content comes from the form. You see these green boxes? This is the actual data that got submitted through the form. So if I look here for address, ah, voila. I look for city. Of course, we have the city because it is part of the form. Same for the postal code. Postal code. Uh, let's look for violation. Don't find anything. Well, let's have a look at the form here. I'm going to scroll down. City, zip code. Oh, it's code violation. Okay, that's okay. So then I'm going to look for code violation. You can see this is literally the question in the form. And then let's do comments. Uh, the name. So the name is also present. First and last name. The email. And contact OK. OK. Love it.
I think I'm done. Ah, actually, I forgot the report ID. The report ID I'm going to populate with the object ID of the new row that was created. So now I'm going to save it. And I'm going to go back into survey one, two, three. And then I'm going to launch this, um, this form. And then I'm going to give it a go. So let's type in the Esri ad address, New York Street in Redlands, California. OK, so the map got centered at that location. Uh, that's the closest address. However, I want to report that right there, there is an abandoned car. So abandoned vehicles. So car abandoned. It has been there for two months. And then my first name, my email. Would you like to be contacted? Yes. Submit. OK. So now if I go into Excel and I look at the report violations, oh, there you go. That's the row that was just added exactly with the information I typed, I typed in, including my typos, of course. So that's basically how easily you can put together these, um, these workflows. Now, let's make it a little bit more fun. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to say, for example, um, comments in English. Okay, so it's basically a new column in my Excel file. And now I'm going to come here and I'm going to take my workflow and I'm going to edit the workflow. So right in between the survey connector and the Excel connector, I'm going to add a new step. So I'm going to add a new action. In this case, I'm going to use the AI Builder action, and I'm going to look for the Translate Text option. So I'm going to select Translate Text into another language. So what is the text that I want to translate? So again, I come here into Dynamic Content, and I say, take the comments from the user, take that text, and then translate into, I'm going to translate into English. It really doesn't matter if the text comes in Spanish, in French, in Portuguese, because this tool is going to translate it no matter what into English. And then I'm going to go into the second module here. Here you will see that, oh, voila, I have the comments in English column. And now again, I go into the dynamic content and I don't go for the green boxes because this is data from my form. I actually want data from the AI Builder connector. So I'm going to take the translated text and put it in there. So again, I save it and now I go back into my form and then I'm going to basically submit data again. Now you will notice that some of the information in this form is already uh, populated, not the address, uh, certainly, but I'm going to type in an address, uh, vehicles, comments, um, un coche de color rojo, está abandonado, de este hace dos meses. That's your Spanish lesson for today. And we got the first name, the email contact. Yes, 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 yes. Submit. So again, this is going to execute. And we should see the data come in. There you go. Look at the original text in Spanish. A red car, it has been abandoned for two months. Translated into English right away. That's enrichment. If you wanted to do now instant notification, I guess you get the point already, right? Like you could say, well, actually, you know, let's do a parallel branch. So I'm going to boop, bifurcate here. And I say, I also want to send an Office 365 message. So again, you come here and you say, send email. There you go. 
and then you can select who is going to receive the email. Well, you can use dynamic content, remember? So you can use the email contact as specified in the form and then add the subject and the body and mix fixed text with dynamic um, content. So as you can see, really, really powerful tools within Power Automate. Um, you can, in, in addition to all of these connectors for different applications, you have uh, options, as you can see, to branch off. In this case, we have a conditional statement. So if the response to this question is blah, then I want you to do this. Otherwise, I want you to do something else, right? Here is an example. This is Integromat in this case, uh, where we listen to a survey one, two, three form, and then we create an ArcGIS workforce assignment. Oh, and by the way, we also create a calendar event. So people know, oh, I need to go and inspect this asset in this date, for example. In this case, we are again using Google Translate uh, to translate information, but big difference. In this case, we take the translated text and we use it to update the original record that was created when survey one to three was submitted. So this literally brings back into ArcGIS extra attributes. In this case, uh, you have an example where the survey one to three form is submitted. We get an attachment, a photo from that record, and we upload it into Google Cloud Vision. Why? Because Google Cloud Vision can take your photo and categorize it. It can tell you what is that photo about. So then we use that categorization data and then we update the ArcGIS feature to enrich the ArcGIS feature. Um, you can see here that we have an option where uh, if certain condition is met, we upload the photo into Google Drive. These are just examples, really the imagination is the limit here. With all the connectors that you have, you can do just amazing things. Um, workflow automation is, is real. Uh, we released this functionality years ago in ArcGIS Survey 1, 2, 3, but we see more and more people using it. Here's an example from the Panama's Ministry of Health. They built an entire uh, solution uh, to respond to the COVID pandemic. And Survey123 was absolutely a central component of it. And workflow automation too. Like when you were going to do a test or you were scheduling your uh, vaccination schedules, all of that triggered from Survey123 workflows that generated PDF reports, instant notifications to the appropriate offices, um, just Again, as I said, the imagination is, is really your limit, really solid technology. And for those of you that are looking to do something with um, Power Automate or Integromat or just workflows in general, uh, we would like to hear from you so that we can you know, connect with you and help you with your project. So if you could just let us know, that would be great. If you would like an expert to contact you, let us know if you're working on a project and you'd like us to prioritize you and talk to you now. Um, maybe there's some time in the future that you just want to have questions and we'll talk to you about Survey123 in general and just workflow automation in general. Um, if you have specific questions about adding workflow automation, you can always reach out to us in that blog. But of course, we'd be happy to meet with you. So let us know that. Um, or if you have everything you need right now, that's absolutely fine. Just click that last one and we will understand. But if you just let us know, that would be great. We'd be happy to connect with you. We'll give folks a chance to <clears throat> continue to answer this one, but um, sure. All right. Great. You know, I'm going to do my best to I prioritize them and like categorize them. So hopefully we can get to the, the ones that are coming up most frequently. Um, the one that I'm seeing the most, quite honestly, is around images, Ishmael. People are wondering if um, there's a way to use workflow animation to, you know, maybe add images through data enrichment and such. Is there a way to, um, to add images? The resources that we want to share with you in this link that you see in the slide, I'm going to, uh, actually, I already pasted uh, some links that ex describe how you can get the attachments from a survey one, two, three form, that is the photos, and you can download them, process them. You can reduce the size, you can 
uh, rename the file. You can upload the file somewhere else. Like I see some people that say, oh, someone submits in survey a photo. I want to upload the photo to Google Drive and then I want to get that link and put it as an attribute of my feature. So people can easily click on the link and, and see it, right? And the other one is the, the example I, you know, demonstrated or showed, you know, very quickly where you get the images and then you use either Microsoft's AI or Google Cloud Vision to really introspect the photo automatically. This is classic in, in forums where you know, organizations want to share a, a form publicly and people send photos. Do you want to review the photos manually? I'm sure at some point you may want to review these photos manually before sharing them with the world, but what if we could take these images and send them automatically to Microsoft or Google so the images could be analyzed and flagged with inappropriate content if, you know, if you know, automatically. So it's totally doable and there is a step-by-step -step guide again that uh, illustrates the process through the link you have in the, in the slide. Perfect. Oh, thanks so much. Um, there are some people that are concerned about the workflows being affected by connectivity. Um, if they have people that are in the country or they don't have yeah. maybe reliable access, it will still work? Yeah, it does. So oh, great. obviously, if you, if you publish the form to a web browser, you have to be connected. But if you download the survey into the Survey123 mobile app, which you can install in Android or iOS, then you take the form with you. Even if it, you are offline, you can still use the form. Remember, workflow automation really happens once the data is submitted, right? So it really doesn't matter if you are offline or online because workflow automation kicks in when you are sending the data, right? Of, obviously, you need to be connected to send the data, but at a point, workflow automation triggers. That makes absolute sense. Uh, here's a really great question. The workflow examples that it's that person seen has sent a notification when a survey or feature is created. Um, if you have many updates, not desirable. Can the workflow check for updates once a day and then send a summary? Well, yes, you can. You can configure the workflow automation to trigger the flow when a feature is created and when the feature is updated. So you have these two options. So for example, anytime a feature is updated, you can go into Excel and say, I want to add a record, kind of like to keep the history of all of the changes that happened. Yeah. And it all goes into Excel, a database or whatever. That makes sense. Speaking of Excel, there's lots of questions around Excel. Can you um, automate the creation of pivot tables in Excel from the data of a survey? That's a good question. I, that's a good question. I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Yes. That would I wasn't sure like, either. <laughs> right. Yeah, we will need to check the, the documentation of uh, the, the connector, the Excel connector, to see what that connector is capable of. Well, do the columns have to match between uh, what's collected from Survey123 and what's in the destination Excel file? Is that important? No, no. Actually, they don't need to match. Uh, you have to map them, though. Like you saw in the demo, I was mapping the column with the question but the actual mm -hmm. names do not need to match. Okay, that's good. There's a lot of questions about Power Automate. Makes sense. A lot of people on the call today use Power Automate. So let's take a look at some of those. First of all, is there an official integration with uh, between Esri and Microsoft for this, um, especially around enterprise? Yes, the Survey123 connector in Power Automate is totally supported. Um, now, in terms of ArcGIS Enterprise, the connection with Enterprise is done through a custom connector. And this is a process that is totally documented and supported. Mm -hmm. You have to create a, a custom Survey123 connector in Power Automate. There are specific permissions that are needed for that, but you can, you can do it. Again, we actually have a tech support article that describes the process. Uh, oh, well. that's great. In the case of Integromat, you don't need a custom connector. Just go into the out-of-the-box connector and you point to Enterprise and it goes. That makes absolute sense. And thanks for documenting that. It makes it easy for people. Um, 
Here's another one. Is there a way for Microsoft uh, Power Automate or Integromat to be configured to generate a feature report, like a multi-page PDF um, with the past week's survey submissions? Yes, Integromat though, not, not okay. in Power Auto. Okay, perfect. Uh, speaking of Integromat, if people wanted to try that, it looks like a lot of people are interested in it. So we have a lot of people using Power Automate. Is there a way that they can try it? Trying, yes. I mean, I think uh, in, in the case of Power Automate, even if you create a free Office 365 account, you are going to get Automate, so you can give it a go. And in the case of Integromat, Integromat has a free tier, so you can use it for free with some limitations in terms of how many workflows can you create, how many times you can invoke them, and so on and so forth. But they also have like paid subscriptions. By the way, I believe, Jackie, we may have a link that Esri users can use to get a one free month with the, you know, premium tier. You're absolutely right. In fact, thank you to Barbara. She put it in the chat for everybody. So if you go in the chat, you can click that and get access for a month. And I believe that lifts the restrictions, like you mentioned, so they can give it a whirl. For That's one great. Month. For a, yeah. a month, yes. That's great. Um, back to Excel for a moment. This person's asking about moving data to Excel. With the process to move data to an Excel sheet, they have multiple records, like fish counts of a species. How can you normalize the records so that they've converted a single record into multiple records with the count of only one of the species on separate lines? That's a long question. Do you want me to read it again? Or did you get that all? I would say, um we may want to connect with you separately and discuss the okay. workflow because it's very specific very specific maybe we can address it on a one one on one session i'll make a note of that for sure thanks for sending in that question by the way is there a way to send survey one two three form data into other applications instead of excel i think you showed quite a few opportunities today around that one i think we're good at that what about esri integrations you know, are there plans to have notifications sent to other um, ArcGIS applications instead of third-party apps? I'm, I'm guessing this question is about push notifications, right, to, to other apps. Yeah. That's a great question. And there has been um, work, research work around it and discussions about enabling so, sort of a push notification system within ArcGIS so applications can talk to each other via push but at the moment we don't have anything that you can use so under consideration i would say that sounds fair enough there's a lot of questions around that one so that's good to hear um there's a lot of questions still coming in, in the chat so i'm just going to take a quick peek i have a i think i'm on like 38 and we're up to 60 so here we go um Are there any good tools for sending SMS texts if you don't know the cell carrier? I think there's a lot of questions around SMS, like how they're sent and you know, the, any charges right. that it might apply, stuff like that. So here what I would say is when you, when you get into Automate or into Integromat, uh, look for SMS providers as part of the connectors because there are many. And typically it doesn't really matter who is the phone provider, just enter in the phone number to which you want to send the SMS, and then it just works. So these are typically um, kind of paid premium connectors. So you have to pay one cent per message or you know one cent for five messages, depending on the country. So have a look. They are super easy to use. I have used them in a couple of occasions, and it's no secret. Get into them, play with them. It's super easy to send an SMS. That makes sense. Uh, and I'm glad it's easy for people too. Here's a question about dates. Uh, what about dates before 1975, like a birthday? Will it be negative data in the feature service so it will cause a big problem while processing data? Um, well, I mean, you can store dates older than 1974 and 75. No, no, there's no problem. I mean, the, no problem. the date object in FGIS handles dates prior to that date. That's not a problem. Perfect. I figured that was just the case, but I just wanted to ask, how about local languages? You showed how when the data comes in, it could be automatically translated. Will the survey appear in the local language if someone's IP address is mm -hmm. indicating they're in Spain, for instance? 
Right. Well, we don't use the IP address just due to okay. privacy, security type of concerns, but we use the locale. So if you connect from a computer where the language of the operating system is set to, say, French, then if your survey has been translated to French, it will appear in French. Right. That makes sense. And what about RFID devices, like a water meter? Can you connect those at all, like the data? Well, I'm glad that this question is asked. I would love to connect with this person because we are at the moment actually working with different RFID providers to integrate their technologies with survey, one, two, three. So what a coincidence. Uh, please uh, shoot me an email because I would love to discuss in more detail that, yes, we. We really want to do that, um, and I'll, I would love to have your input on that. Yeah, sounds great. Exciting use case for sure. And uh, hopefully we can connect with you, but feel free to reach out, like Ishmael mentioned as well. Um, another question around addresses. So with Surrey123, you can enter a street address, and it finds the place automatically. But what about a, a mailing address? Does that work as well? I'm guessing like a PO box. The example doesn't say a PO box, but I'm guessing it's like those complicated ones, probably like Uber or something. Oh, um, oh, I did, did I say that unit one hundred four. Thank you. I see that right here. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't know how to answer that, but I can explain okay. how it works in case you know. So give it a give it a go and see if it works. Right. If you get the right location for your PO box or or whatever. But the way the address question works is it relies on an ArcGIS locator. If you don't have your own ArcGIS locator, it defaults to the Esri world geocoding service. Um, now, in some cases, you know, you may want to geocode against other things that do not appear in our geocoder. In that case, you can use ArcGIS Enterprise to create your own locator, and then you simply tell Esri Survey123, please go and use this locator. This could be a locator with PO boxes, for example, that you have, and then it will work. Same experience, different locator. That's great. Um, there are a lot of questions like, that are pretty lengthy, so that's why I'm like squinting and trying to make sure I read them all carefully here. I don't want to say anything incorrectly, but it looks like um, they want to ask, can we have um, LRS information from roads and highways? Like, they mm -hmm. associate a county route, post mile, based on a geolocation, um, and can we generate a unique site ID from these roads or highway roads? Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, if I understand correctly the question, you, you want to Great. set kind of a, a location in the map and then get the mile marker and the road. This That's what it looks actually, like. I was earlier um, this week, I met with uh, a, a user from, from the Netherlands, and that's exactly what they are doing. Uh, and it can be done both ways. You can click on the map and get the mile marker and the road, or you can enter the road and the mile marker, and we can automatically create the, the point or center the map at that location. Both things are uh, totally doable. Um, you know, again, this is maybe a more of a one on one discussion to, to show you how sure. you can do it, but it's, it's all doable. And I know we're almost out of time, uh, but someone did have a question around calculations. Can you use a workflow to calculate fields in a feature class attribute table based on other attributes collected? Yes, it does. In fact, one of the advanced examples I showed at the end, right, where we use the, the module to write back into the feature. So remember, when the workflow is triggered, you get information about the record. You get all the attributes. You can use expressions within the flow and then get a value that you write back into the feature. That's totally doable. Now, a fair question is, is that the best way to do it? It's not always, workflow automation is not necessarily a solution to everything. Like, if you have a survey one, two, three form, and you want to simply calculate a column based on input in other attributes, I personally would simply create a calculation within the survey one, two, three, form logic. Okay, it really depends on the use case, but nine times out of 10, you will probably want to do a calculation instead of using workflow automation. I think workflow automation kicks in when you want to calculate the value 
but you need things that are outside of the form itself. You need to combine this information with, like, take the weather. What's the weather at this location at this time? Your survey doesn't really know, right? So you use workflow automation to fetch that information from an external service and then put it back in. Hopefully this makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> Makes sense to me. And I think that we're out of time today, but I think we got some great questions. And like I mentioned earlier, we'll take some time and get those up on the blog so everyone can get answers to them. And if there were people that were looking for a more in-depth, hopefully they filled out that um, survey or pool so we can contact you and help you out with your questions too. But you can contact us. With that, I think I can pass it over to uh, Barbary, but thank you, Ishmael. Great job. Great job. Fantastic. Lots of information. Yes. Wow. Such cool stuff today. Thank you, Ishmael and Jackie. Uh, really appreciate you sharing your expertise today. Folks, remember to keep an eye on your inbox. We will be in touch with the recording, all these fabulous resources and links that were shared today, along with a couple of other goodies and um, an attendance certificate if you're collecting those for professional development. We appreciate you stopping by for the brief survey on the way out. That helps us do things better in the future. And we hope that you have a great day. Tell a friend about Esri and Directions Magazine. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.